Welcome back to my next playthrough series. This time we will be playing through The Starfarers of Catan. Yes, it's a Catan game. And yes, it came out 20 years ago, I think, 1995. Uh, and it's a pretty awesome version of Catan. I actually like it the best of all the ones I've played so far. Uh, and I have not played the Star Trek one, uh, but I have seen it played, watched some playthroughs, and I still think this one is better. So just really, really cool, nice components in this one. And yes, just about impossible to find now that we're into 2015. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a complete three-player game. I'm going to glaze over the rules somewhat. Uh, there is a fantastic uh, rule summary video uh, out there. Uh, I will put a link in the description. Uh, I forget the individual that did it, but it is just excellent. It goes through the entire game and all the rules. Again, I'm just going to glaze over it very quickly. Uh, if we look right down here as far as setup goes, uh, this is how they suggest you set it up uh, in the game manual. Uh, and there are these little tokens uh, that go on the planets, if you play Catan at all. Uh, the resources. And these are the numbers you roll on 2d6 uh, for the resource. And of course with four players, you have blue, yellow, red, and green. So this is the starting layout. There's an advanced rules layout where you can place your uh, pieces down in turn order and so on. I'm just going to go with the basic uh, setup rules in the game as they are uh, uh, talked about. And now there are red tokens that go on the red dot planets. There are blue tokens that go on blue dot planets and yellow on the yellow planets. And these are just randomly assigned and if I just zoom up here, you can see this is one very large map, stretches a long way. And what you can see on the left and on the right, these are the alien races. And you have, I forget their names, I would probably butcher them anyway. Uh, these guys, when you make a trading post, you end up uh, being able to collect one of their trading cards. Uh, and they're worth two victory points if you hold the token of that particular race. So there are four of them. Uh, I think I'm just going to zoom down here a little bit uh, and talk about specific components and then we're going to see who my competition is this time. I'll be playing green. Uh, we'll take a look at the yellow and the red. All right, so this uh, is the rest of the game components. Of course, lost the dice. The dice are these nice uh, wooden uh, D6s. Ooh, and there's a lot a lot to explain and like I said I will link that incredible uh, extremely good instruction video uh, in the write-up of this one. So there is food as a resource, carbon as a resource, fuel, uh, trade goods and ore. So just like Catan you have instead of sheep and stuff you actually have other things. Uh, everyone gets one of these game uh, plaques uh, and they explain basically how uh, you trade in resources and what you can do on your turn. So they actually have a summary of the game turn and it's first thing you do is you roll the resource. Uh, so you roll two die and you look at the number and of course if it's like a four then the planet that has a four on it produces a resource and the planets were color coded uh, and as you can see on the cards themselves. So some give you fuel, some give you uh, food, some give you carbon, that type of thing. Uh, and then you take the resource card from the reserve pile. Uh, if you have less than nine victory points. Uh, sorry, take the resource card from the reserve pile if you have less than nine victory points. So the second part here is uh, we build a deck, we take 12 of each resource card uh, and shuffle it into a deck of 60 cards. Everyone starts the game at four points. Uh, uh, one for your, or sorry, three for uh, your colonies and one for your star base, which I didn't really explain. But basically this is a star base, which is a little colony with one of these rings on it. You can build three of those in a game. And just a plain one, of course, is just a colony. So each colony is worth one point, each star base is worth two. So you start off the game with four points and you never lose them. A colonies never go away. So anyway, that's um, kind of beside the point. Like I said, I'm glazing over rules 100 miles an hour here uh, because I've, as we play the game, we'll learn the rules, but there's a, a fantastic rule summary video that I will link. Okay, so ah, what to talk about next. Uh, so if you have less than nine uh, victory points, of course, everyone has four, you get to draw one of these cards and that's kind of the resources, the help you get from Earth. 
I'm going to play the slightly accelerated game, which is in the variations to the rules. And it basically states that if you have less than six resources, you get to draw two of these cards. So that will speed the game up a little bit. Uh, next is you can trade and build in whatever order you wish. And this is the building cost of everything here. If you want to build a trade ship, it's an ore fuel to trade goods, colony ship, ore fuel, uh, food and carbon, a spaceport out of your colonies. Uh, you can turn three carbon, two food into a spaceport. Freight rings are two ore. Those go onto your ships. Boosters, two fuel, go onto your ships. And cannons, two carbons, go onto your ship. And again, they show you the resources here and the planet types. Uh, and then you determine your base speed for all the ships you have on the board. And you have three of them maximum. Uh, and they are used to move around the board. And again, you'll see all this happen uh, as it happens. And you basically roll your ship. And I'm going to show you how that works here once we go over to the player area. Uh, and introduce you to the yellow and red adversaries I have. Uh, and I'll show you how that works. So you basically shake your ship, which sounds silly, but you shake your ship. Balls fall out the bottom. Uh, there are four balls inside the ship, and two of them are displayed in a little clear case under the bottom. If you roll, one, a black ball shows up with your shake of the ship, you have an encounter. And there's this huge stack of encounter cards here. Uh, and they're basically to be read by another player. So I will have them hidden from view. And, you know, it's sort of a what do you do scenario. You run into pirates, you run into traders, you run into ships flying into the sun. All kinds of crazy encounters can happen. And you have to make a decision based on what you want to do. So it's either do you do this or do you do that. And then you follow the logic chain and go to the next scenario. So uh, cool things can happen and also bad things can happen. So these encounter cards really spice the game up nicely. Um, and I think... Uh, oh yes, and there are also five uh, white tokened chips that will go out in the board later. Some of the, uh, you know, some of the red, blue, and yellow chips have either pirate layers on them, and they're uh, depicted by a, a cannon symbol with a number on. That's how many cannons you need to meet or exceed to beat the pirate layer. Or it's an ice planet, and it will show one of these... Uh, uh, freight rings and a number and that's how many freight rings you need to have on your ship equal to or greater to overcome the ice planet uh, and so you can see here you have cannons these plug into your ship your boosters which snap onto your ship but please don't snap them in because they break the ships and as i mentioned you have the rings here you also have something called fame rings uh, these are just little plastic pieces that go on top of your ship and every two of them gives you one victory point. And you can gain fame and you can lose fame for things that happen uh, during the encounters. Oh, all right, running out of breath. Let's go take a look at the ships. Uh, and then uh, see who we're playing against. And I think after that, uh, I think we're just going to go right into uh, playing the game in the next episode. Which will be part one. Uh, and we will see how far we get. The other thing I should mention is the game normally goes the first person to reach 15 points, and it's not an even number of turns. Uh, so not everybody uh, gets, say, 10 turns. If, if somebody on turn uh, 10 is the first person for turn 10, and they hit 15 points, they automatically win. Game is over. Uh, the other two players then would not get their 10th turn. So unlike some other games, uh, this is not an equal turn game. Uh, if you get to 15 points first, you just automatically win. I am not going to play that many points, though, because this game can really, really, really take an awful long time to play. Uh, if you do that, I'm going to play first to 12 points. Uh, and you'll see that will be long enough. But in a normal game, it's the first one to 15 points. All right, I've talked enough. Let's take a look at these extremely uh, cool plastic ships that come with the game. Uh, and, I mean, they are just, they are the Sirene Penetrator ships uh, from the uh, old computer game Star Control. Uh, I mean, that's what they were modeled after. They have to be. Anyway, let's take a look at them and meet our competition. All right, so let's take a look at these really, really, really cool prop ships for the game. They're golden colored. Uh, and yes, come on, Sirene Penetrator. Uh, that's what they are. I mean, anyway, Google it. You'll see. Ha! <laughs> My color is green. These just pop off the top. Uh, these are fame rings, and everyone starts with one, and they just slide on top of your ship. Uh, and like I said, uh, when you buy 
more cannons. The cannons actually plug into the top of the ship uh, to show more firepower. When you buy boosters for your ship, they are supposed to snap in place here, but believe me, you try and snap them in place and you break off the little plastic pieces here, so I just leave them beside the ship. It's sad because these would look really cool all plugged in uh, if you get uh, all six of them. And I should mention you can only get six cannons and you can only get six boosters and you can only get five trade rings. Uh, and the trade rings have no problem, they just snap in place like that. So you start decking your ship out uh, and like I said, there's this clear little plastic uh, bubble at the bottom. So when you shake your ship and you roll it, uh, certain colored balls come out. So see if we can get the black one, with the red and yellow. There's the black one. So if a black one comes out as one of the two, you have an encounter. So yeah, really, really, uh, really awesome ships for the game. What can I say? Uh, you know, kids playing with toys, but they are really cool. All right. This is me, I'm green. Who am I playing against this time? Well, the yellow team, as denoted by the, you know, the yellow here on the board and the yellow on the ship, we have not Owlbear, but we have a Talosian. Oh yes, indeed, it's Talos the Talosian. And he's, uh, you know, been a long spacefaring race and he's uh, basically telepathically told me he's gonna kick my butt. So uh, it could be, we will see. And yes, the red player. Who else would be playing the red player but our returning uh, loser, Craig the Klingon. Of course, he's going to be back and he's going to be playing red. And, you know, he's already told uh, Talos and I that he is going to crush us into the dirt. Uh, and yeah, so if we find dirt planets, uh, we'll just avoid them. So he can't do that. Anyway, that uh, is very briefly, like I said, 500 feet in the air, or 5 million feet in the air, <laughs> the total basic overview of Starfarers of Catan. Uh, and so you want to land on these little yellow circles here around planets, try to colonize them. You want to go up here and interact with the alien races to get their special cards uh, and of course take their token. Um, you get two points or one point for every two fame rings, one for each colony, one for every uh, token that you take off the board that was an ice world, one point for every token you defeat on the board that was a pirate lair, and you get two points for, of course, holding this token. Uh, if you have the majority of um, or majority of trade centers on the alien base here, you get it. If there's a tie, whoever has the lowest number populated on the base will retain the token, and you have to be you have to do it in order from one, two, three, four, five. And in order to uh, get one of these spaces with your trade um, ship, you have to have that many trade rings. So you can see if you wanted to populate, if the first four spaces were taken up and you wanted to populate space five, you need to have five space rings on your ship to do that. Um, and the other two things, you get two points for, of course, uh, as I mentioned, a a spaceport which has the ring that goes around it and you can build a total of three all right like i said out of breath lots in this game um i'm just going to go ahead we're going to just start playing it in part one and like i said i apologize in advance again this is an extremely difficult game to find or get these days um and so if you do have it wow it is just it is fun should be played uh, if you can get it at a reasonable price, I would say snap it up wherever you find it, uh, because it is, I think, so far the best iteration of Catan. Uh, just a lot of fun to uh, cruise around this great big map, uh, and as you can see, it stretches very far, uh, interacting with aliens, and you get all kinds of wild encounters on your way to try and get 15 victory points. So we're going to be playing uh, a shorter game, only to 12 victory points, uh, three player, it does actually play best with four players, but that would uh, drag this uh, video series on even longer. Uh, so I just opted to go with three. Uh, and anyway, I guess that's it next time. Uh, will be part one. We'll get into the turns. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Join me next time for the Starfarers of Catan. It's me versus Talos and Craig the Klingon. So Talos the Talosian. All right. Thanks for watching and join me next time.
And what would my setup video be without an error? Of course, I forgot to set up. Everyone starts with three of these randomly shuffled cards. So I'll just do that sort of off camera. Everyone gets three. Uh, and that's what we get. So join me next time for part one. All right, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.